Hello everybody, today we'll be trying to harvest some graphite electrodes from batteries. All batteries have some form of electrode. These electrodes differ from battery to battery. Some have metal, others have graphite, and in the case of lithium ion, a special cobalt. Material is used. Though common in most batteries is graphite, electrodes can range from grids, plates, to even rods. And often choosing the right electrode is dependent on the system. The common household battery, the AA battery, it is most commonly in the form of a rod. This rod can be found on the positive end. However, the negative end is also an electrode, fits around the rod. Space in between is filled with electrolyte. A lot of batteries tend to use potassium hydroxide. And unlike common belief, this is not acidic much rather highly basic, however it is still highly corrosive and should be handled with care. I think people have the misconception that this is actually acid because of these properties, but also because sulfuric acid can be found in car batteries, which some of the first batteries were actually lead acid batteries. They started out as very simple electrolytic cells with rods, eventually developing into grids. The grids are made of lead, they're coated with a gel, which holds the sulfuric acid that acts as an electrolyte. Lead acid battery is the perfect example of a system that can recharge, as by reversing the charge you can restore the battery to being able to discharge. This is due to how they work. At the negative plate, lead reacts with the sulfuric acid. This creates lead sulfate and hydrogen. While at the positive plate, lead oxide acts with the sulfuric acid and three hydrogen ions, forming lead sulfate and H2O. Total of conversion of the plates can be reversed by applying a current into the system. This allows you to restore the battery's charge. And this same principle is used in many other rechargeable batteries, especially in lithium ion batteries. Another interesting concept in battery design is the nickel cadmium battery, in which both electrodes are some kind of foil with electrolyte in between them. They're wrapped up in such a way that they spiral. It's very hard to describe. Fortunately, I do not have an image of one of these batteries for you all, nor do I have an image of a vehicular battery. The battery we have here is very old. It is important to note that the tools being used here will most likely be damaged by the electrolyte. However, I've used them for this before, and the exact same thing happened. I'm honestly not quite sure how these are still even operational tools at this point. Anyway, I found one that was so old and so cheap that I was easily able to shop through it in one shop. And I was very surprised when I found that it actually had a piece of graphite in it. As most batteries nowadays are using some kind of metal. Of course, if they're lithium ion, they're using a fancy cobalt compound or also graphite. This was amazing as I needed this electrode for quite a while now. All of my electrodes are very thin, are easily breakable, and in fact have already broken or have been used in other experiments, which can be found here on this channel. Finally, after extraction was completed, we had a nice electrode. I put it into a beaker and brought it inside so we could clean it. It's also important to clean off your tools as the longer they are exposed, the more corrosion will occur. As I said before, the electrolyte should be pretty easy to clean off. Doing this with lithium ion batteries would probably be a bad idea as water would react with the lithium ion battery components. I did this before where I chopped the lithium ion battery in half and then shoved it in water. This was a terrible idea. This was a mistake. While there may not be pure lithium in a lithium ion battery, they still do react with water in a substantial way, producing a lot of heat, and that was one thing I regretted doing. However, it has been around two years since I did that, and these are not lithium ion batteries. To clean the electrode, I dropped it into a mixing flask full of water. I was hoping that the water would scrub away any of the wonderful substance that was coating this electrode. However, this substance stuck to the electrode very well and did not care about the water. So I did this for quite some time until I was done, at which point I had to scrub the electrode with a paper towel. As for these two 9 volt batteries, I was not very excited to open them, although we probably should have as they likely would have had better electrodes in them. The main reason I did not open the gray one was because it said lithium ion, and that is spooky words in my opinion. But I am not afraid of lithium ion because I think lithium will blow up in my face if I stick it in water. No, the only reason I'm afraid of lithium is because I know that it will get very hot if I stick it in water. Scary first group elements come after sodium. Lithium will just sizzle at you and be angry. 
This is not ideal as to put out a metal fire you must use baking soda. The real scary first group elements come after sodium. One time I saw an instructor put potassium into water. It exploded. A tiny flame shot out some of the grating on the top. There was a lot of smoke. And just generally potassium is very scary. Now I hope you all enjoyed. I have been looking for other things that we can do that are not electrolysis, however, I am currently looking at some very interesting electrolysis things we should do. The thing is, I do not have access to many chemicals, so I will just have to mostly do electrolysis, or attempt to make my own. Which is proven very difficult, as with some chemicals I will need to build setups that are kind of complicated. 